All right, this is inverse trig, and we're going to call it part two because we're going to talk specifically about the inverse trig functions. To warm up, I want us to think about cosine of some angle equaling one. And if you remember back to our unit circle, imagine where the x value is equal to one. So one such would be zero degrees. Or if you went all the way all the way around 360 or 720 and you could keep going because really there's 0 plus 360 degrees times n weighs answers infinite answers and if we we're going to do it in radians it'd be 0 and 2 pi and 4 pi so 0 plus 2 pi n where n is an integer in the same way, if you wanted to talk about root 3 over 2, which, when we ask about the sine value, that's the y value. Where's the y value? The big side, because remember we had 1 half, root 2 over 2, and root 3 over 2. So where's the y value, the big one? Well, down here and down here. So that would be 30 degrees before you hit 270, so 240 degrees and 30 degrees past, so 300 degrees is another one. And so the y value is a negative root 3 over 2 in both of these spots, and you could also do a negative 60, because we could go backwards this way. And in radians, this would be a negative pi over 3. That would be a 5 pi over 3, because it would be almost all the way around to 6 pi. And then one less, a 4 pi over 3. So the trouble is, is that there are infinite answers for an equation like this. And so the original trig function, remember, if you take the sine of some angle, turns it into a ratio, negative root 3 over 2, or a ratio of 1, which is really 1 over 1. Inverse trig functions turn ratios, these, back into the angle. And so you've done this before in terms of a triangle, where you said, well, if we've got some angle, we don't know what it is, but we have the adjacent side, and we have the hypotenuse, meaning the cosine of that angle would be 5 over 13. And then we said, well, let's take the inverse cosine of both sides, because inverse functions undo, and so we take the inverse cosine of the ratio, and it gives us some angle. And so in your calculator you have, make sure you're in degree, inverse cosine, hit the second button, and then the cosine of 5 over 13. And so you get 67.4 degrees. Now, the calculator sometimes, well, and so notice that the calculator only gives you one angle when really there's infinite angles. Um, if you're outside of the right triangle, which we saw up here, there were two angles just in 0 to 360 that had the negative root 3 over 2 as an answer. And you could keep going and going and going. Because if you think about the graph, sine started at 0 because the y value is 0, and then kept repeating. And so where's the y value equal to 1? Well, or even root 2 over 2. Right here, right here, right here. Multiple parts, so which one is the right answer? If we said inverse sine of some number and cosine started at the peak and it went back over. And inverse tangent, it repeats itself too because it has the asymptote there and there. So how do we know which one's the right answer? So here's the deal. This is what the calculator gives us, and here's why. Functions are defined that if you only have one input, you better only have one answer. Every question only has one answer. Every x only has one y. And so if I have, if I want to know sine of something, 
back up to the top. Sine of some angle gives me negative root 3 over 2. If I say inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2, it better only have one answer. And the calculator just gives us one answer. And why does it only give us one answer? If you type it in, inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2, the calculator gives us negative 60. All of the inverse sine in the calculator is going to be between negative 90 and 90. All between here and here. Negative 90 to 90. And why is that? Well, in the function here, you're going to cut it off right here to right here. And we're going to say, well, we have all of our negative answers right here and all of our positive answers right here. And so we're going to restrict our function to there. Otherwise, it won't be a function. In the same way, for cosine, we have all of our answers right here. And so we're going to restrict it between 0 and 180. And in the same way with tangent, we're going to restrict inverse tangent right here. The reason being is when we first talked about inverse functions, that our, our function had to pass the horizontal line test in order for the inverse to pass the vertical line test. And so this function is only going to pass the horizontal line test if we restrict it right there, negative 90 to 90. Negative 90 to 90. And 0 to 180. And negative 90 to 90. So we're going to go on and do some problems and sort of make sense of all of this. So inverse sine reminder. Inverse is just the negative 1, sine of negative 1. And so we're asking, where's the y value equal to root 3 over 2? So I draw my little picture. Well, the y value is equal to root 3 over 2 when it's the big one of the 30, 60, 90. It's also equal to root 3 over 2 over here. But because I restrict my domain from negative 90 to 90, it's just going to be that one. And so it's going to be 60 degrees or in radians, one-third of 180, one-third of pi. Arc cosine. I use arc cosine because it means the same thing as inverse cosine. It's just a different notation. So where's the x value, the adjacent side, equal to root 2 over 2? So we recognize that that is our 45 degree angle. And this is root 2 over 2, at the 45s, and it's also root 2 over 2 if you go down here. But arc cosine only defined 0 to 180, and so we're only going to use this one, 45 degrees. When it comes to tangent, it's a little more difficult, because tangent is y over x, and we have to think what combination of y's and x's gives me 1. Well first thought is, well, if the y is 1, but then the x has to be 0 or something like that. And so if the y and the x are the same, that's where we get 1. And so we have to think again when my x and y are both root 2 over 2. That's when I get... And then also, when my x and my y are negative, both negative and I'm drawing all of these, even though tangents only define from 0 to 90, because we're going to be solving them here in a little bit. So once again, I'm looking at 45 degrees. Both of these, by the way, are pi over 4, if you're thinking in radians. Just wanted to keep doing that. All right. Arc sine, same thing as inverse sine. Just a, a different notation. Where is the arc sine equal to negative 1 half? So that's when the y value is the short one. So where is the y value of the short one? Right here and right here. And so I'm only looking for this one because from negative 90 to 90. And it's key that you recognize that it's not 270 to 360 and 0 to 90. It's negative 90 to 90. So this is this angle measured this way. 
so negative 30 degrees, or negative pi over 6, and not 330. If you do inverse sine of negative 1 half, it will give you negative 30 degrees. And so it won't give you 330. It's just trying to get used to what the function is talking about. Arc cosine. When is it, the x value, negative root 3 over 2? So when is the x value the big side of the 30, 60, 90? Over here and over here because the x has gone to the left. I'm only interested from 0 to 180, so I'm going to use this one. And so this would be 150 degrees. And also that would be over 6, so 5 pi over 6 because it's almost to, to 180. Arc tangent. So another tangent, we have to think y over x. Which y over x would get me root 3 over 3? It's got to be something with the root 3 in it. And so here's our combinations. It's either root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, or 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. If it's this first one, the 2's cancel out, and my root 3 is left on top. So it's not going to be that one. I want this one. I want my y to be 1 half, and my x to be root 3 over 2. So y is 1 half, x is root 3 over 2. So that is 30 degrees, or pi over 6, if you prefer radians. So what we're going to do next is, is solving them. And so I'm going to come back in the next video and sort of explain that.